quiet show. I remember Lagasse tonight. Oh, man, let me tell you, we got a show for you. You know why we're traveling to a place tonight where gondolas are the best way to get around town? You know what I'm talking about, huh? Venice. Venice, Italy. Oh, yeah, babe. Well, in tribute to this incredible city, I'm going to cook up, oh, some seafood risotto. Maybe some fresh pasta with shiitake mushrooms. Maybe just a few antipastos, you know. A ah, couple of things that's going to blow your mind. Get ready. Get ready to say to the cuisine of Venice, you know where, right? Right here on Emerald Live. talking about this just a little bit ago. How many people, anybody have, have had the pleasure and the opportunity to go to Venice? Anybody here in the audience? What a city, huh? Jeez. We are talking about how just, I mean, you got to, there's no cars. No cars. You got to, you have to take a water taxi or a water bus to get to get to the city. It's the coolest thing. It's a great place. And the food is unbelievable. Ooh. Unbelievable. I'm ready. And because it's surrounded by water and it's basically built on water, so much of the cuisine is seafood related. Although you can find great veal, you can find great meat, but their influences of the food is really the season. And this is why I've, I've got to do some of the food. The season, the produce, the simple cooking techniques, but just great delicious food and the spirit of really just sort of living. And food is a part of living. And uh, so we... Uh, Went a few times to uh, a place which is carried on here. Uh, there's a place here in New York by the Cipriani family. We, we say Cipriani, but it's Cipriani. And um, so you can get these now in New York City. But over there, they have these delicious white peaches. Or, um, or they're not only just white. They're a regular peach color as well. But the sweetest and just most delicious things you've ever put in your mouth. Then and I guess somebody over there which we've got information from the home office about that, decided, hey, this would be a very cool thing to put with champagne. And they called it and created the Bellini. And now I'm, like, stuck on these Bellini kind of things. <laughs> so I figured, let's just, like, cut right through it, come right out the box, and let's make some Bellinis. Is that all right with you guys? All right. <laughs> How you guys doing? Welcome. Where are y'all from? Long yeah. Island. Long Island. <laughs> okay. Where are you guys from? I know where you're from. Miko, how are you, my friend? What's up, man? Good to have you. How are Welcome. You? Florida. How you doing, man? Florida. That's okay. We like that. We like Florida. <laughs> you got a lot of peaches in Florida. Here's what you could do with them. You peel them. And if you don't want to peel them, don't peel them. You're not going to hurt my feelings. <laughs> so we got peeled sliced peaches, sugar. Basically, what we're doing is we're beginning to make this little simple syrup. So in a sauce pot, I have uh, the water, and I'm adding the sugar to dissolve the sugar. And uh, just like New Orleans, sometimes the humidity. Oh, we love that. We got tricks for everything. Come on out of there, baby. All right. So now, wow, we got sugar and water. We're on to something. Next thing. What you want to do is you want to dissolve that, folks. The great thing about the syrup is that not only uh, after making it a few times can you use it for bellinis, but it's wonderful on a lot of things. You could use this, put it on your pancakes, you know, or your waffles. And then once that sugar starts dissolving, we add the peaches in there. And uh, we're not going to cook, cook it a lot. What we're going to do is we're just going to let it simmer a little bit, let it extract some of the flavor 
and let the flavors come out. And then basically what we're going to then do, once that happens, is you should let it cool a little bit. And then you just put it in the blender. So you let it simmer for a couple of minutes. I mean, no big deal. And you have a syrup. You have a concentrate, just like what we have right here. And if you don't want to go through all that trouble, I'm sure you can find in this day and age Bellini mix, which is basically just a peach extraction, which you see here. And then comes the real fun part, is, um, is making the Bellinis. I figured, why not, Doc? We'll kick it up a couple of notches, you know Let's what I mean? kick it up. <laughs> of course, you don't really need to do too much with this stuff to begin with. <laughs> so we're going to... You guys ready for a little Bellini? Sure. Sound good? Yeah. What a way to start the evening. <laughs> That's the way I look at it. When in doubt, have a Bellini. <laughs> if you're still in doubt, have another one. And then it's, uh, it's sort of, you know, the one, two, three, four, five, six. Six turns. Did you know that? Yeah. Probably watch Emerald Live. <laughs> Did you know you could make a little chair out of these? My friend, <laughs> it's true. My friend Marcel, they, they, we make little chairs out of these. And then, you know, we get like little BAM guys and we put them. Yeah, we play the BAM game, you know what I mean? It is your birthday too, isn't it? Well, that's why we're making Bellinis. What's the art of this? Everybody's so frightened that when it comes to opening the champagne bottle, it's like, honey, get out of the room. I'm getting ready to open it. You don't, like, want to have any, like, of that stuff. You just want to do it really. That was a little loud, but that's okay. All right. Here it is. Check it out. A little of the peach extract. Oh, about that much. And then nothing like some good old Vouv Clicquot. I like that. I like that kind of. We'll even stir it up just a notch. All right, we'll let you be the, we'll let the birthday girl be the judge. The first Bellini made. Happy birthday. Bellini to you. I'm going to tighten you guys up in a minute. Stick around. When we come back, Anthony Pasco. We'll be right back. I'm taking you down the memory lane now that we got a little Bellini started from a uh, little inspiration from the famous Harry's Bar. Harry's Bar opened in Venice in 1931. I didn't make it up. It's from the home office. <laughs> Hemingway, Orson Welles, Barbara Hutton, Onassis. Great. They all hung out there. Actually, it's a very cool place. But did you know that the... Uh, Cipriani family also opened here in New York in 1985. Fabulous place. And uh, you can have a Bellini there, just like you're having for your birthday. One of the coolest things that I really love about Italian food and being in their homes or in restaurants is the multiple platters that you see in a lot of the restaurants uh, when you walk in the front door of a lot of them. Uh, the obvious ones because of the region. You know, you can ask yourself, you know, God really blessed them with a lot of great ingredients. I mean, beside things like bolognese and, you know, pizza and et cetera, et cetera, truffle, yum, yum. <laughs> but some special things that they used with simp simple antipastas are not only just the olive oil, but also some of these uh, modinho is very, very close by, and they're very touched with very different ages. These are aged. Uh, People don't realize that um, it's, it's like a ritual for not only Venetian glass, but also with, uh, with balsamic vinegar. And uh, this is six years old, this 12 years old, this 20, this 25, you can keep going on. It's unbelievable. 
And the concentration of these, simply accented with great olive oil, makes a lot of these antipasto plates. So we're going to build one. We're going to build a couple of them, actually. The thing is also that I really enjoy is them taking simple ingredients like eggplant, which we use a lot of in New Orleans, carrot, different vegetables. You can see here that we grilled and roasted some peppers. And uh, basically, we're going to rub some eggplant with some olive oil. We're going to season it with a touch of salt. Season it with a touch of pepper. Got a little pepper music by Doc Gibbs. And you just slice the eggplant very thin. We're just going to lightly grill a few of these vegetables up. And um, as I said, they use a lot of the seasonal uh, down in the markets. They have a wonderful fish area, but a wonderful produce area um, with figs and different mushrooms and things that are really happening. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start grilling the carrot, slightly warm them, some of the eggplant. We'll build an antipasto with that. And uh, another one of my favorite things is carpaccio. Uh, the French have their version, which is ground and called steak tatar. Um, carpaccio is a wonderful way to, uh, to start a meal or to have as a meal. So I'm going to do that right now. They use the tenderloin of beef, and I prefer also to use a little bit of tenderloin, which is a little filet mignon. And then they slightly begin to start pounding that as I'm doing here, very, very thinly. Now I'm using two pieces of plastic wrap. You could use butcher's paper as well. What happens is that the meat begins to start breaking down as it's doing right now. So you can easily pound it very, very thin, paper thin. You can almost see through it. We'll do this as another one of our antipastos here. See, very, very, very thin. And I'm using this little stroke motion with this mallet just to get it evenly spread throughout. You want to keep it very, very, very cold as well. A lot of, um, a lot of places here uh, take carpaccio and they think that um, if they freeze the meat um, that it's easier to slice. They think it's a slicing method by freezing the meat and then slicing it on a very sharp slicer, that that's really the way that carpaccio is. And basically, it's the little technique of not only high-quality meat, but uh, which is the tenderloin, but also um, really just kind of doing that technique of doing it real thin. All right, we're going to build a few of these right now. Um, the way that I like carpaccio and the way that it's served most of the time in Italy and particularly in, uh, in places in Venice. Let's see if we can get the trap door open here. <laughs> Maybe we cry of act and they didn't tell me. There we go, Doc. Whew. It was the music. See, this is very, very, very cold. And basically the technique that I want to show you is they'll take, take this plastic wrap like this and they'll lay it right on the plate and just invert it, and then let that be just sort of on the plate like that. And then the next step that they do is they'll take this, traditionally, they'll take arugula, really, really simple, beautiful baby arugula like this, and they'll lightly season it. They don't really believe in over-seasoning or highly spiced unless they accent it with some, some dishes with some pepper. And then really good olive oil, and we're going to talk about that as well. Really good extra virgin olive oil. This is when you would use an extra virgin olive oil, when you're relying on just simple flavors like this. So traditionally, this is not only served with arugula, but it's also generally served with a garlic aioli. Uh, some of them serve it on the side. Uh, some of them will decorate it, as I'm doing right here, with a little bit of garlic aioli like this and uh, some little bits off to the side that you could work into the meat. They'll be generally just to do a small little drizzle of olive oil like I'm going to do right here, a few drops, a little bit of fresh ground pepper, and a little bit of salt. So now we have the carpaccio with the arugula. Looks pretty good. Parmesan cheese is always another little option, and they'll generally serve it just like this. 
not overdressed at all, but very, very simple. So we have our carpaccio. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take and make another antipasto here. We're going to take our eggplant, and we're going to take our carrot, simply grilled like this, lightly, lightly cooked, lightly seasoned. We'll take a bit of our roasted peppers, both green, red, and some sweet yellow that we had. And then what we'll do is maybe we'll just drizzle a tiny bit of good olive oil on this as our other antipasto offering, very lightly seasoned. And uh, while you're going to the refrigerator right now, probably getting one of those bags of those famous chips, <laughs> I'm going to work on a little bit of beautiful tomatoes from Venice. And when we come back, we're going to kick it up another notch. Stick around! <laughs> Antipastos, multiple courses. Wow. I hope you didn't miss the simple carpaccio with arugula and aioli. Beautiful grilled vegetables with just good olive oil. Uh, while you were getting wherever you were getting out of there, we uh, cut up some beautiful uh, Parmesan Reggiano cheese, beautiful olives. And now, one of the, another famous ingredient is prosciutto palma from the Palma region. I love it. I could live on it. Maybe it's a pork fat thing. I don't know. <laughs> but they get it over there, too, you know? And um, the incredible simple things is that, you know, what I really, really love about the food here is that, and we should all get a little lesson from this and be reminded that it's nothing complicated. It's not rocket uh, science, you know? It's just using seasonal, beautiful, inexpensive, fresh ingredients and turning it into delicious food. With this prosciutto uh, palma, uh, they use a lot and have a lot of figs there. And uh, what we'll do is we'll have a little bit of the figs with the prosciutto, and uh, sometimes also it could be with cheese. Beautiful figs, both the mission dark figs, also the green figs as we have over here. We have some of those, and uh, we'll have that as part now of our, our little antipasto. And then my favorite one, I was working on these tomatoes, is the simplest fresh basil or basil. Basil or basil. Is it basil or basil? Yeah. Okay, I just want to make sure we're still in New York City. <laughs> but one of the most delicious things also is what they call buffalo mozzarella. And uh, you can now buy it in America, but um, they don't make buffalo mozzarella here in, uh, in America. Uh, you have to use, uh, they use cow's milk. But in Italy, they still make mozzarella cheese with the buffalo milk. It's unbelievable. And the flavor is incredible. And here's, uh, here's a simple one that we're going to do right here. I'm going to just take a little bit of tomato and uh, do some nice slices of that. We're going to season real light the tomato, just a tiny bit of salt, tiny bit of pepper, sort of on the outside like this. Look at a beautiful tomato, huh? You can see it just glistening with juice. It makes me happy. <laughs> and what they'll do again is they'll take a bit of that Beautiful, delicious, tasty olive oil. This one's from Umbria. And then just drizzle a little bit of that, real simple like that, real clean flavors. 
and um, tiny bit of just a little bit of salt to kick it up a notch. Then we'll take that beautiful, delicious mozzarella. Look at the texture of that. You see the texture? You know, remember the show when we made mozzarella? Anybody remember that here? That's a ways back. Getting old. <laughs> Look at this mozzarella, huh? So we have that now. And then we'll take some beautiful leaves of basil. Just real simple like that. And we'll do a few leaves like this. And we'll add this now to our wonderful antipasto spread, if you will. Looks good, huh, guys? All right. All right, you guys mind the antipasto bar. Whew, man, that was work. Whoo, hey, not bad, Bellinis. All right. Now we're going to kick it up a few notches. Yes, indeed. Risotto. No big deal. Really isn't. I'm going to show you my way. Seafood risottos in Venice are sort of like candy bars in most stores here. They're just everywhere because it's so influenced by the water, by the ocean. Not so much the canals or where it's built on, but right by it. It's just incredible. We're going to make a seafood risotto, but I want you guys to know the simple, simple technique. Because if you don't want to do it with seafood, you could do it with vegetables. You could do it with chicken. You could do it with sausage. Pork you could do it with. You could do all kinds of risottos. Here's the quick technique. Olive oil first. Real simple. Arborio rice comes from Italy. You want to check your rice always. Make sure there's no pellets. God knows what else is in it. If you rinse it, you've got to be very careful. If you rinse it, you've got to start using it quick. Now, here's what we're going to do. You have to flavor rice. It's a very simple deal. A little onion in this olive oil. Real simple. We're going to cook the onion and extract the flavor. While that's cooking, you know, I'm like a seasoned fanatic. You're going to add a little bit of salt, and you're going to add some fresh ground pepper. As soon as the onion cooks four or five minutes, translucent, gets the flavors going, as it's going right now. It's going for me right now. We're going to add a little garlic couple of cloves. Then we're going to add the rice. You're confused at home about risotto? Don't be. Go buy one of those $1.50, $2.50 little uh, timer clocks because in exactly 22 minutes is when it will be perfect. 22 minutes. And you got to stir it. It's a food of love thing. Once the rice starts cooking a little bit, I'm using a shellfish stock, just that I made from some shells, covered them with water, then I strained them. You can always add liquid with risotto, based on the texture that you want. So we're going to stir this. 22 minutes, as it starts to cook, we wouldn't add the seafood in right now, it'll be overcooked. The seafood would be completely nasty in 22 minutes. That's why you're watching the show. Don't even think about touching the dial when we come back. Notches unknown. Stick around.
everybody doing? All right. Doc Gibbs and Cliff, rocking the house. All right. Now, I tell people when I try to uh, show them about risotto in the 22-minute stirring thing, right? We've been stirring it the whole time while you were over there eating Oreos or whatever. If you're not sure, you don't have one of those clocks. Hey, don't panic. Just, like, taste it. <laughs> but you'll know if it's done because is it crunchy? Is it still al dente? And how done do you want it? And also, this is a great time for you to check the seasoning out. If you run out of stock, just use water and adjust the seasoning. Now, as this evaporates, risotto, you see how it's starting just slightly to stick. That's because it has so much starch in it. That's why if you don't stir it, it's going to stick and you're going to burn it. When that happens, what you do is just you add a little bit more stock or you add some water. And that how, that's how you can tell. Unless you're cooking it out of a specific recipe. Now, I'm going to show you my trick with risotto in a little bit. We're going to let that cook. Let's talk about some of the shellfish, some of the seafood that they have in Venice. These clams, mussels. This is a rouge, okay? This is a little bit of monkfish. What is rouge? This is a rouge right here. It's a red mullet. And in Europe, it's a prized fish. You have these on a lot of menus called rouge. We have a lot of these in the South, but they're not very popular as far as on menus. I serve them on my menu. I think they're a great fish. They taste a lot like a snapper. We had some questions while we went on the break. Well, what, really, what is prosciutto palmer? Is that different than, you know, other prosciuttos? Yes, it is, because prosciutto palmer comes from the region. And all of these hand, hams are hung, and they're air dry. That makes them very, very special. It's unbelievable, the flavor particularly when you serve it as simple with just like some figs as we did for our antipasto. Now, before I burn the risotto. Now, the risotto is about three quarters of the way cooked right now. My calculation says about 17 minutes. Now, here's what we're going to do. First thing we're going to do is we're going to add in our shellfish, the mussels and the clams. Just like that. Why? Well, because the fish is not going to take as long as the shellfish to get hot, to steam open. We want to make sure that we've got enough liquid in here right now. You can tell. Is it starting to scrape? What we'll do is we'll add a little bit more of that stock. As it evaporates and the starch starts happening, then... What we'll then do is take a little bit of salt and pepper and season. Season our rouge and also our monkfish. They have a lot of monkfish that they use there as well. Now we'll add the monkfish in here. Little pieces like that that we'll start burying in. Whatever fishes that you can get, just don't go sleep with them. <laughs> right, Doc? That's right. You don't want to be sleeping with the fishes. <laughs> so we're going to stir this right here. Since it's your birthday, why don't you come up here right now and you could help me. And then you could be embarrassed in front of 40 million people at home. Come on up. What's your first name? Jennifer, happy birthday. You get to stir this for a quick minute like that, just like I'm doing right here. Okay? Check it out. All right? I got a side towel right under there if you need it. Because we're really cooking here, aren't we? Okay. While you're, while Jennifer, the birthday girl, is doing that, check this out. I got a little bit of olive oil inside of this skillet right here. And then, you can watch me, you know, too. It's, it's okay. <laughs> mushrooms are a big factor in their cuisine. I mean, when the porcini mushrooms, when, they, when all the seasonal mushrooms are out. But they have an awesome supply of these delicious shiitake mushrooms. This is what I did. Olive oil, shiitake mushrooms, chopped up. What we're going to do is we're going to put them in there. 
whenever you're working with mushrooms, I said it before, it's going to absorb that. You see the oil that I put in there? It just went <laughs> gone. Finito. Right? Hey, don't panic. Add a little bit more. Okay? Not the bottle, a little bit more. Lightly seasoned with salt, some pepper, because we're going to do this shiitake mushroom and pasta dish. And the birthday girl, Jennifer, and I, we're going to finish the seafood risotto and show you when we come back. Stick around, everybody. We'll be right back. is unknown right now. We uh, got the antipasto thing happening throughout the neighborhood right now. This is my neighborhood. It's the Emerald neighborhood. Got those mushrooms, right? Olive oil, salt, pepper. There's my sous chef over there, Jennifer. Salt, pepper. I added a little bit of cream. This is an inspiration from the Oriental Cafe over there. Whoo, what a place. See, and then that cream starts doing that, Jennifer. Now watch. Shallots. About 30 cloves of garlic. We're going to add that in there. Then, next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of, they use a lot of veal stocks. Oh, doesn't that look good already? We're going to let that simmer in those mushrooms. Just think if they were porcini mushrooms too, huh? Woo! Woo! All right. We're going to come back over here, and we're checking. We don't want to break our seafood all up, but we're going to check on our risotto right here. That's exactly what we're doing. See how it's getting nice and starchy right now? And the shellfish is opening up. I don't want to break up that fish. Now I'm going to show you my trick to the risotto. Can you guys see that all right? Sorry about the pot. How's that? Now, here we go. The way that I like to finish my risottos, very simple. I take a little bit of cream. If you don't want cream, you don't have to do it. Some people will probably slap me in the hand that I'm using cream. Well, I'm using a little bit of cream. What happens when you do this? Well, it's quite, it's quite simple. The fat in the cream gives it this unbelievable creamy consistency. You see that right there? Love that. So try that no matter what risotto you make. The other thing I like, right at the end, I like to add a little bit of green onion. Something about the green onion that, oh, just makes me wild, you know? <laughs> you may like fresh parsley, like Hilda. We could add a little fresh parsley if you want, the Italian parsley. Maybe you want to kick it up a notch, right? So now what we're going to do is this. We're going to add a little pimentum weather, or what they call crushed red pepper. While that's happening... I got this fresh pasta since we got, oh, maybe this is going to take about three minutes. Wouldn't you think, Rhoda, this fresh pasta? So what we're going to do is we're going to add this fresh pasta in here right now because, like, we're cooking. We're having, like, fun on a cooking show. You know what I mean? So we got that in there. What I like to add in my water is a little bit of olive oil, and I like to add a little pinch of sugar plus our pasta. Look at this, our mushrooms simmering away right now. Now, here's how I like to finish the risotto. To finish the risotto is this. I like to add a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. That was my spoon there. A tiny bit of butter right at the end. Now, don't go wild with the cheese. A lot of Italians don't believe that you should use cheese when it comes with seafood. Hey, cheese or no cheese? See, it's a cheese. <laughs> We're going to add a little bit of cheese, okay? Then, watch this. Oh, yeah. That works for me. Does that work for you? <laughs> now what we want to do is this. We're going to check the seasoning. I'm using my spoon. 
Oh, yeah, babe. <laughs> I'm back in Venice. Alcovo. This place, this restaurant, this inspiration, Alcovo in Venice, check this out. If the seafood isn't fresh enough, they close the restaurant. I was impressed. All right. We're talking risotto action here, Doc. Looks good. Yeah, come on over, Doc. You get a minute or what? Yeah. Yeah, just... For you, Emerald? How's that? Got a minute. Yeah, brother. See if you get a flashback of being back in Venice, okay. all right? Just, uh, just kind of... Just kind of go right in there for a minute, if okay. you don't mind. Because then we're going to, like, do the birthday girl and, you know, give her a little taste. You know, the sous chef, she helped. Want another one, Doc? Mm. How is it? You back mm. in Venice? I'm there. You there? <laughs> Thanks, Incredible. baby. Incredible, man. Thanks, Appreciate you. it, baby. All right, here's what me. we're going to do now. When that pasta is ready, right? Al dente. Is it al dente? I don't know. Here in America, what we do is we, like, Take the pasta and we like throw it up in the ceiling like this. Oh, it fell in the pan. I guess it's ready. All right. We're going to add the pasta right in there. Okay? Watch this. Tie it up. Oh, yeah. Here's what we're going to do. Little parsley. Parmesan cheese, more fresh ground pepper, and I'm going to start plating this up inside of this bowl. This would be a good time for you to, like, well, whatever. Stick around. We got a killer cake coming up. everybody and uh, I took the pasta out and cooked it for about another minute you see that inspiration from the oriental cafe right check that out some for me some for doc I got to take care of doc you know the musical musical director you know thank you all right little parsley right there fellas check it out doc you're right over here good buddy now I got to show you guys Birthday girl didn't even get any risotto. Unbelievable. They're mean here, aren't they? It's amazing. Now, there's an inspiration. Here you go. So you're over there at Harry's Bar. Back to Harry's Bar we go, right? And uh, I see the guy comes up to me and he says, dessert? Yeah, what do you got? Oh, you know, we got the famous Titty Masu, you know, la, 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 la. He said, we got this Italian butter cake. You kidding me? I mean, it's so cramped in there, you can barely, you know, it's just a happy, happy thing. They take this butter cake. They did multiple layers. I'm going to condense it. A beautiful butter cake, soaked it with Madeira. Then they did this buttercream, pastry cream thing, right? Yeah, look at this, right? Then, beside that, they took another cake, and then they, you know, they did like this layer thing, Right? But the cool thing was, is they made this buttercream, which I absolutely love, an Italian meringue. And they kind of did this thing like this. See how simple it is? Pastry cream, do the sides, cut up a wedge, little Madeira wine. And then they did the sides like this. The thing was like this high, right? It was just unbelievable. How's the risotto? Pasta? You guys are happy? Antipasto? Doc, you're happy, happy? Happy, happy. I mean, the food of Venice is just terrific. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for joining me tonight. I'm Emeril Lagasse. There you go. Thank you.